Hey everyone, welcome to Reading the Green and our Golf DFS podcast. My name is Mike. I'm joined with Kyle right now and Jordan a little bit later on Tuesday, May 17th for our PGA Championship preview. It's going to be a great episode. Got a lot of good stuff to get to. Of course, we'll talk about the Byron Nelson recap too and a couple of other things. Kyle, major week. Pumped. I'm excited. Yeah, it's uh, I'm 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 really excited for the, this week. I think um, we've had a couple of just you know birdie fest, a little bit of snooze fest golf tournaments on the PGA Tour, and I think Southern Hills is going to be really tough. And I'm looking forward to just seeing the best players grind it out. So I, I it's going to be a great week of watching golf. I agree. It, especially there's just a lot of nuance to this week. With we haven't been here since what 2007 uh, yep, at certain event. Well. And then there's been a, a a lot of work done on the course, and just yeah, I'm excited. Great field, great field, great event. Uh, yeah, full fledged major. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. So we'll get to that in the second half. We'll talk about the PGA Championship in Southern Hills. Uh, first, uh, we'll we'll do the Byron Nelson recap. Um, I have a I have this is the first time that I've purchased uh, I think a cold IPA. This is a collaboration between Lupulin in Minnesota here, Big Lake, Minnesota, and Zilker Brewing in Austin, and it's called Why Is It So Cold? I kind of like this style. It's supposed to be brewed like a lager and and be a little crisper, but still have a little bit of bitterness to it, and I, I think it's pretty good. It's only 7%, it's 7 so it's, it's up there, but still feels pretty fresh. Yeah, I think I've had one or two. Uh, I enjoyed it as well. I, it reminds me of... What was the brute IPA? Look yeah, crazy? yeah, yeah, yeah. There was like really effervescent IPAs. Uh, Wait, that nice crisp, you know, like mm -hmm. almost of a bite on the end. Yeah, it's pretty good. Well, I'm uh, I'm still down in Iowa this week, so I'm going with a uh, toppling Goliath. Mm. Pompeii. Sorry, I got the you can't see it on there, but mosaic hopped IPA, delicious. Yeah, the Pompeii is good. I think that one has some like blood orange to it, right? It's a little little fruity. Yeah, yeah, it, it's it's solid overall. It features mango and pineapple hop flavors, medium body, but uh, Apple and Goliaths, if you haven't had them, you know, non-Midwesterners, that make some great beer. All right, so let, let's do the Byron Nelson, and then before break, we're going to come back and do a little feature on some of the betting odds for the PGA Championship. Uh, even though this is a, a, a DFS podcast, um, we, we like to, to dabble with on the, on the betting side. So we'll talk about that after the Byron Nelson. So a topic for us early Thursday morning, we get the notice that CT pan, one of our top 12 players in our model or 14 players in our model has withdrawn five minutes after the lock time for his 1 45 PM tea time. And then that just sent it sent PGA DFS Twitter into a frenzy. You had a you had a love Jason Ruslan though <laughs> tweeting at CT Pan saying you know it was a very well worded tweet. I should have had that ready. You know, like hope everything's well. We're not mad. Yeah. But just curious. When did you let the PGA know? And of course, it was what seven minutes before they announced it. Right. So it would technically have been a minute or so before lockdown Not that we could have acted on that, but. Yeah, man. Uh, He's not a guy I would normally take to. And I think coming off the week that we had uh, at the Wells Fargo, where the top of our model was so strong, I was just grabbing players that like, hey, not normally my guy, but I'm going to play CT Pan because he's getting a ton of love this week and he feels pretty safe. And then and then that happens. And uh, yeah, well, I and mean, he, like he, he was. He was seven percent owned, I think, in one of the bigger the bigger GPP contests I was in, and you know that's not insignificant. Um, and and that really like there were some other issues I had with with my core in that contest, but that certainly didn't help. Yeah, I also had him in a twenty max core. I think he was quite a bit. I want to say he was a little higher owned in mine, uh, but I mean, it's not doesn't mean he wasn't a good play. Uh, you know what can you do? I uh, I didn't actually hear. What it was, I something about a family member maybe being in the hospital was kind of was drifting around on Twitter that day. But I do think there are solutions overall that, you know, and, and apparently this was the part of the conversation that there's something around legality that they can't have the later lock time. 
that's that's why DraftKings can't go to that FanDuel. Whatever. Specifically in individual sports, right? In yeah. team sports, I guess because you would be drafting a player from a different event. For some reason, it's allowed. But in in even though he's playing later and you could pick different players, it's the fact that the event has started. Something around that allows fantasy sports to be legal uh, for individual sports with the the lock times at one time. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. But uh, there's still something PGA can do, especially since they've been so great about embracing the gambling element. Yeah. Is, like, hey, Wednesday night, you have a survey that every player that's supposed to play that week has to fill out and send back. Or like, you know, quick, three right. quick questions. Like, is there, do you have any injury concerns? Or do you anticipate making your tea time? If, if you answer <laughs> yes to either of those, rate it on a scale of zero to four. Like it, it, right. and they can just publish that information. It wouldn't be that hard. Or I've heard Rick Runga talk about range reports or, you know, something like akin to an injury report. There's stuff that, that can be done that wouldn't be that hard. It won't be that so hard when the, and get the input. In the sports books, like on if you have it, if you had an outright ticket on CT Pan, they might choose to refund bets placed on him, correct? Yeah, I had a top 40 on CT Pan. So I got a no okay. contest. I just got my money back. Yeah, and it just it just sucks within DFS. It's just so detrimental to your entire week for that lineup. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what the solution is. Uh, it just it's it's a tough break, and I and I've been giving my cousin who plays in our uh, our listener league a hard time because he has had. I'm not kidding when I say it's been like four or five of the of the after lock withdraws he's had uh, in a lineup in that contest this year. So um, that was I just think another. You played Harris English about three weeks in a row. <laughs> well um so anyways that was uh, that was certainly a lot talked about uh on twitter at the beginning of the tournament but by the end um we had kh lee taking down a back-to-back title at minus 26 so kyle you took the under on minus 25 but kh lee w- one ups himself and finishes minus 26 Hey, I just threw it out there. It was one data point. We weren't certain we were going to see that again. Turns out I was wrong. And I will say, you know, it, it, first two and in, just two initials to go by uh, as far as the scoreboard goes. Mm-hmm. And somebody from that part of the world, CT Pan, Cage Lee, weren't that far off. <laughs> well, hey, did you? Uh, he's quite I had the to comedian, get a isn't he? Level joke in there. Let's see. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, since he's not here yet. He, he's Cage Lee is quite the comedian, though, isn't he? Did you see his uh, his comments about being world number one? I didn't. Oh, no way. Yeah, he see his his comments where they asked him about his career goals. And he said, my first goal is to become the world number one golfer. But if that doesn't work, I want to become the world's number one sexiest golfer. <laughs> <laughs> and then he, he, he followed it up with some comment around. He's like, to be sexy is to be muscular. And to be muscular means I can't eat as much. But sometimes I have a, a really big lunch and I say, well, I'm not going to eat dinner. But then I get to dinner and I'm really hungry. So I eat more. I, I did <laughs> see that last part of that. I didn't, I didn't hear the preamble. Yeah, yeah. yeah just it just uh, that's what a what a great sense of humor. I mean, he had a you know, nice looking family that he, he, he wins back to back titles and in, um, in Dallas there and I think that's just uh, probably a ton of fun for him so so, what, um, so no, like Craig Grant's next year are you playing KH Lee <laughs> how could you not it's like playing Victor Hovland and Mayakoba yeah you know? I, like I agree you just have to um so but here's the thing zero of the RTG experts were on KH Lee this week we've I'm not sure about, how I explain that well we've talked about uh the logical fallacy before of saying you know, like you've talked about it, I, I would say, yeah. like the hot hand mentality, right? It doesn't really people don't follow that as in golf as much as other sports, yeah. right? Like if a team's hot, you know they're gonna do it again. Or you know it, the Patriots won the Super Bowl last year. I'm gonna rely on them to do it again because they've been there, done that. It's kind of the thought in other sports. And I feel like people fade past winners in PGA. Yeah. And is maybe we kind of started to tra- change that trend a little bit. Well, you mentioned Hovland at Mayakoba. He's yeah. had some repeat winners this year, back to backs. So maybe we push that out of our minds. But I, it's 100%. It has to be that. Yeah, it's surprising that just that nobody, out of everybody that we follow, nobody picked up on it. But honestly, like, KH Lee's a bit streaky too. Like, I feel like he pops up and then he 
he falls off the face of the earth and he pops up and but you know 26 under is a good number and certainly deserved uh deserved the title it was nice to see a bunch of the guys that are going to be playing this week at, at southern hills play well um you know great to see we'll talk about jordan speed a little bit in the second half but Great to see him uh, put together a nice weekend. You know, Scheffler was was around, even though people would probably say he underachieved. Um, so I think it was good to see signs of life from those guys. You didn't expect them to win, but nice to see their games in good shape. Yeah, I, you know, I didn't mind the event overall, right? I know it's a birdie fest and not that challenge, of course, but I think there was some good things to take away going into major, as you mentioned. One last note on KH Lee and, you know, he missed his last three cuts prior to this, mm-hmm. uh, prior to coming out. Well, I guess, sorry. And then he missed three cuts and then 25th at Wells Fargo and then and pop to see you win. So outside of that, in the last, you have to go back to Zozos before, since he's had a top 20. So yeah, really I, tough to, to bet on that form. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And in when well, granted pricing for this week came out before, but he's 6,500 this week. Very different course, but that's uh right. Uh, yeah, yeah, but to your point previously about seeing some guys pop, there was a couple guys I really wanted to watch close how they played last week. Uh, Hideki, um, since we haven't seen him a lot, he looked good. Uh, we'll be on him this week. You had Xander come back from the dead and just storm I know. I know. into the weekend <laughs> and just you know, shoot up the leaderboard and you know hold first for a little bit on Sunday. It's crazy. And JT and Scotty played well. Uh you had, you know, Mark Leishman, who we highlighted last week, that seemed like an awfully low price, you know, come in with a T15. And some of the other guys I feel like we've been playing a lot that, you know, maybe hadn't quite creeped into that top 20, like an Austin Sutherman and Seamus Power. So, you know, overall, I didn't mind the event. And yes, it wasn't a huge challenge, but I think there was a lot of takeaways we can have on on form since we finally got to see like you know almost a full field event before the major yeah yeah so definitely looking forward to seeing how that carries over this week uh listener league rtg listener league kyle congrats you've been knocking on the door um you and i both we've climbed out of the basement and we've made some of our money back nice work maybe we finally found the magic formula right um yeah i (laughs) I have to give it to uh, to rick amen rick run good uh he had me on speed this week, you know, every now and then we, so we have these bottles and we take a lot of inputs and figure out kind of where the consensus plays is. And I use a lot of that for my builds, but you know, on a GPP uh, style contest, such as you know, the, the, the RTG league, uh, you got to pivot a little bit to avoid a little bit of ownership sometimes. So he sold me on speed, highlighted how great he's been in all parts of his game, except for the putter who he, where he's normally been really good. So it was just a matter of time till I came around and yes, he, he didn't have a vintage speed putting week last week, but he gained, I think 1.6 strokes uh, per round. So good enough uh, to uh, climb in the second there and, and carry me to victory. JY Sodi comes in second after finishing first last week. I think can anyone stop this guy in the uh, the RTG league? He I see I feel like he's in first place after uh, 36 holes every week. Yeah, so. we we need to focus on taking him down. He's winning <laughs> way too much off us. Let's go, Joe Buchholz. Let's pick it up. <laughs> and JY ATD finishing third. So good good week this week. I hope to see uh, a few more folks uh, from our, our our audience join the listener league this week for the major championship. I know we get a few people that like to play for the major. So let's pump up those numbers a little bit and get a little more money moving around. Um, one, I'll, I'll give one last comment on um, on the Byron Nelson for the RTG model. This was a, this was an off week for us. It was an anomaly. Uh, we've been on a very, very good run, uh, this spring as far as, as our model goes. And this is one where we had quite a few landmines. So we call in that, in that top 25% mention share range. And I'm not sure exactly why, but I mean, you could say, I mean, it was, um, Zalatoris, Kitayama, Hadwin, Gooch, CT Pan, obviously with Drew, Sam Burns, all those guys missing the cut who had a ton of expert love. Um, and that was honestly like since, um, I think it was the first time in like 12 events that we've seen a, a percentage of missed cuts that high for us at the top of our model. So anomaly, not going to think too much about it. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it was anomaly. 
uh, you know, we talked about CTP and obviously we knew what that was. It's, there is a little bit of a rumor going around that had one maybe had an injury issue as well. So maybe tread softly there this week or try to do a little bit of research into that. You know, Mike and I were talking about Will a little bit pre-show. And I I went a little soft on Will last week and it helped me because I, you know, obviously didn't go all in with him like I normally would. I'm a big Will Saltoris fan. It just didn't quite feel like a perfect course, even though they you had the Texas narrative and you know the ball striking and whatnot. But a birdie fest, you're counting on guys to make a lot of putts. Mm-hmm. That's not Will's strength. No. You know, we, we want him in the harder courses where he's grinding out when so I think a good little takeaway maybe for the future on a guy like him is just to think about why why they might be getting a lot of love and mm-hmm. challenging whether that narrative really fits sometimes. Yeah, I think that's a that's a good point. I had probably a little I was a little overweight on Zalatoris last week and then he ends up missing the cut on the number. Um one last shout out uh, to to Bet Spurts Golf Podcast. They were our top expert this week. It's interesting we typically see the the contributors, the experts that we follow that that say give us anywhere from say two to eight plays are the ones that typically end up um, rising to the top at the end of the week. Betsperts gives us twenty plus plays, and and they ended up being the best. They they made eighty um, percent of their picks made the cut this week, and it was a it was a week where we saw a lot of experts miss a lot of cuts. They were the lowest made uh, lowest miscut percentage across all of our experts. And so nice to see um, some content, like I said, rise to the top that we don't normally see. So shout out to, to those guys there. Yeah. And I, I would recommend checking them out if you haven't before. Uh, Ryan Noonan is uh, the main lead. You can find him on Twitter. Uh, but we, we like listening and like their content. Yeah. Good stuff. OK, um, before we go to break. I'm going to toss in another topic here, Kyle, uh, given that you are in the great state of Iowa that has legalized mobile sports gambling. I uh, want to talk a little bit about PGA betting cards for this week, because I think there's, you know, we'll spend a few minutes on this, but I think there's a ton of really interesting spots to get a little bit of money on. Um, if you're looking at outrights or some of the uh, the other place bets, um, we talked about Cantley a couple weeks ago. We jumped on him after the RBC. He's still hanging around 20 to one. I think he might be up to like 22 to one at this point. Um, but where else? Like give it, give a couple of other, uh, a couple of spots you're looking at where you think there might be some good numbers. Yeah. Uh, glad you mentioned Cantley though. I think that's a ridiculous number based on his form. We saw him losing a playoff and then I I'd carry Xander Shoffley to a W at, at, uh, down in New Orleans. So I, I thought he looked great last time out. So excited about what we got there. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of the experts this week are in Cameron Young. Uh, we got him at about plus 8,000. Uh, you know, you you go into any of the models out there, Fantasy, Fantasy National or any of the other ones people are looking at, he's going to really pop. When it comes to a course like this, we've seen him play in a lot of different courses, challenging uh, tough field events. So he's getting a lot of love. It seems to be uh, this this event's going to be pretty prevalent to uh, you know scrambling. So Cameron Smith, man, twenty five hundred for Cam Smith, a guy you're going to need to scramble mm-hmm. around the greens, get up and down, uh, all in there. I like Hideki. I I had him last week. He finished third for me. Uh, hey, plus thirty two hundred. And then Mike, I think both of you and I were looking at this one, but. Brooks Kapka, two-time winner. I know he's not in the greatest form, but fifty-five plus fifty-five hundred. I'll throw. I'll throw a little. It's change it's an there. auto bet. Yeah, it's an auto bet. Like I mean, like I said pre-pod. Like if there's one guy that shows up regardless of his form and says I'm going to be awesome this week, it's him. And <laughs> fifty-five to one is a great number to get him at. Um, you know, the couple of uh, two other guys that uh that I, I called to your attention um, mid-tournament because I thought the numbers were going to jump. Um, Max Homa, 100 to 1 two weeks ago, middle of the Wells Fargo. I think Sunday on the Wells of the Wells Fargo, you could have got him at 100 to 1. I think he's down to 50 to 1 now. Um, that one's been bouncing around a little bit. I, he's a tough he's a tough guy to back, I think, for a win because what's his best finish is at the Masters at, like, tied for 35th. Like, he doesn't mm-hmm. have the major pedigree. 
Um, but 100 to one's a great number for a guy that's got excellent form lately. Um, and Spieth, even at uh, last weekend uh, during the Byron Nelson, you can get him at 25 to one on DraftKings. And I think he's down all the way to 14 to one at this point. So another guy that I really like, I mean, this this feels like a golf course that's just tailor made for Jordan Spieth to play well. You think of all the all the creativity and magic that you're gonna, you're going to need around the greens here. Um, he he's the guy to do it. Uh, and it's just you know, do you believe in the narrative that that he gets the career grand slam this week? I'd I'd like to be on that. Yeah, I you were great to point that out last week uh, to get the plus twenty five. I uh, yeah, it's just going to come down to whether you putt. I, I love him around the greens, and if, if he can make some punts, putts, he's going to be right there. Yeah. One more. One more I'll throw out uh, that we were just joking about. He finished. You say, well, welcome to the podcast here, but, I mean, he probably, he played well last weekend, right? Similar style, similar greens. It might be Spieth's speech here. It could, it could be. Jordan, you, you are a little robotic. Welcome to the podcast. How was league? Oh. Sorry about the ro- robots. Uh, good, I drank because I can't golf uh, with the fingers. Um, so it was good. It was good. I got a little cold at the end. I actually went in with another guy who uh, wasn't playing after seven holes. We got a little Art Gecko Jordan going on here. We got, it, it. <laughs> He's back. He's back. Oh, man. Well, good. I'm glad. That's uh, That sounds like fun. That sounds like fun. Well, thank you. We're just uh, we're just wrapping up our, our betting cards. We're gonna take a quick break here in a second. But my last name, Jordan or Kyle, he he finished top fifteen this this last week. Mark Leishman, two hundred and fifty to one. I mean, it's it's almost comical. Like he is a guy you totally could see winning at the end of the week, and you wouldn't be surprised. Two fifty to one. So I I definitely would uh, be looking at that. Yeah, I think from a course fit standpoint, uh, he gets a little wayward off the tee sometimes, but I, mm-hmm. I think it's almost a better fit for him here than it was last week. So, yeah, yeah it's a crazy number. All right, well, let's uh, let's take a quick break. It will come back. We'll do the full DFS preview on Southern Hills and the PGA Championship, uh, and we'll be right back. Hey everyone, welcome back. We have our PGA Championship preview, but first, join the RTG Listener League. It is a DraftKings league that we play every week with our listeners. You can find the link on Twitter sometime on Wednesday before the PGA Championship starts. Low stakes, play for real money with listeners, get a few bucks out of our pocket. It's super fun. Uh, Looking forward to getting a few more folks in that this week. Okay, PGA Championship, second major of the season, Southern Hills Country Club in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Course went through a big redesign last handful of years. Gil Hans um, came in, widened the fairways a little bit, took out a ton of trees, uh, redid all the greens complexes, put in bent grass, huge runoffs, uh, section greens. This is going to be a really, really fun event to watch the best players in the world compete on it. A lot of people are comparing the course a little bit to Augusta as far as the greens go. Um, and so I think there is going to be some parallels in terms of the players that that have the creativity that shows up at the Masters um, and have that show up here at Southern Hills. This course is going to be a beast, though, off the tee, 70, up to 7,500 yards as a par 70. I think one of the first par five plays on 656 yards or something like that. So... Going to need length and going to need creativity around the greens. It's going to be awesome. 250 yard par three. I can't get there with my driver. <laughs> <laughs> it's um. I, I'm sure the tees will move around. Um, will move around, and you know, I know 17 is one that that lists at 377, but they're talking about maybe moving it up to you know 310, 320, and and have a little risk reward. So I'm sure it won't play 7500 every day, but um. It means they got they got some options in terms of how they set up the course. Yeah, the the green complexes and the false fronts and balls rolling forty yards back, man, that just seems like nightmare mm-hmm. fuel. Um, yeah. But that is probably going to be why you hear one of the main things talked about this week is stroke screen around the green. Uh, I think that's something we're definitely going to need to key in on uh, as the type of plays we want. 
Which is interesting because I feel like in DFS, it's it's strokes gained approach, strokes gained approach, which is still true here. Like this is going to be an yeah. iron player's golf course because of the length. You're going to hit a lot of seven, six, five irons into par fours. But to put the uh, the emphasis on chipping is really interesting. I hear a lot of people writing off Victor Hovland right away because of how awful he is at chipping. And it's like, there's no way this guy's going to be able to get the up and downs he has to. So, yeah. But, 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 if he, but if he just hits the greens, then he doesn't need to. Well, that's, exactly. that's the anomaly. <laughs> yeah, and that's the point. Uh, you know, Morikawa's victory right in 2020. If if you don't need to chip ever and you just <laughs> throw darts all day, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so a couple of other um, a couple of other nuggets here before we get into the picks. Um, so first of all, just top 70 in ties is a big field. There's 163 players, I think, right? You're going to get... 20 club pros right so they have the pga tour uh the pga of america uh club pro system they have a number of qualifiers so there's gonna be some really cool storylines uh in guys that are just getting a chance to compete um you'll see the field using range finders right pga of america governs this with their set of rules so they can use range finders this uh this week i don't know how much that's going to really matter but i think it will be interesting to see that on tv um and then the other thing I wanted to, to bring up, do you guys remember the 2001 U.S. Open at Southern Hills that Retief Goosen won? No. I do not. Great. Perfect. Because this is what happened. I mean, I was not very old. I remember watching this. And I remember being, at, I think, at the golf course uh, when this was going on. Um, Retief Goosen missed an, a two-foot putt on 18, the 72nd hole, to win the U.S. Open. This was right before he watched Stuart Sink miss a two-foot putt on 18 that would have got him into a playoff with Retief Goosen and Mark Brooks. And so this ended up going to a Monday playoff in 2001 um, between Retief Goosen and Mark Brooks. And this is where Retief Goosen won, I think, the first of his two U.S. Opens. But both guys missed two. Like, it was painful. Painful to watch two guys miss a chance to win a U.S. Open putts that short. And... I don't know, Jordan. Honestly, Thanks. it reminded me of that time. Remind me of that time at the Island View guest day when you and I both missed like two foot putts that probably would have got us like six, seven hundred bucks in a in a giant skin. <laughs> yeah, but you know what's worse, missing those two putts or having to watch an eighteen hole playoff between Retief Goosen and Mark Brooks. <laughs> like, can, is there anything less inspiring than that I'm, golf round? So, okay. So when I was looking this up, because I was like, I had to remember the exact details. And I was like, wait a minute, that went to a Monday playoff? Oh, yeah, oh no, one my remembers, God. no one remembers that. <laughs> they took away the Monday playoffs now, right? No, I think it's Not still the U.S. Open. For the U.S. Open, yeah. Uh, I thought they changed that maybe last year. But we'll, we'll talk about that in like a, a month. <laughs> but that's like that's your I draw. I'm glad you brought that up because like I, I couldn't oh. but like I even like obviously Tiger Woods playing Rocco Media, you know, at Tory Pines was, you know, appointment TV, not, not Retief Goose and Mark Brooks. <laughs> but that's like at least Rocco Media was still a name for a while. I just Googled Mark Brooks. The first two what? people to come up aren't the golfer. <laughs> and this guy's got a terrible goatee and like faux hawk. He's like a comic book artist. Mark so, Brooks. well, isn't he? Isn't Mark Brooks? Um, is he not one of the the Simpsons guys? Maybe not. I thought he might be. Um, here's a here's a funny Mark Brooks story. Sorry to go on another tangent. 1999 U.S. Open um, during what I think it might have been around Thursday or Friday, one of those rounds. Standing behind the 18th tee. With my cousins, my brother, watching, you know, players come through and hit their tee shots. Mark Brooke gets up there. He goes back, takes his backswing, and he just about clips my brother in the chin. And he just turns around and says, like, come on, seriously now. Uh, to the to my brother, who is all of, like, eight years old at the time. And that was just a running inside joke about Mark Brooks and tell my brother <laughs> to back off. So um, I guess I, that's the only reason I knew who Mark Brooks is, because he just about took my brother's head off. Nice. So, what's the story? <laughs> Anyways, let's talk about let's talk about plays for the week at Southern Hills. Um, I don't know, Kyle. Uh, why don't you give us the rundown on the model so far? I know we got a few more experts to to get plays in, but I think we have a pretty good idea of where the consensus is this week. We do, and I would say the one takeaway at this point in time is 
the consensus is a little spread. Uh, you know, as Mike mentioned, we haven't had an event here since the redesign. So I think there is a little bit of a difference of opinion on, on where to go. But at this point in time, uh, also a little different at the top of our board, we have a, somebody at $7,600. Cameron Young, $7,600 and 47% mention share. And then we go to some of the stalwarts from there. Scotty Scheffler, Justin Thomas, Patrick Cantlay, all at 38% mention share and joined by Matt Fitzpatrick at 38% mention share. So those are the top five of the board at this time. So you, you have, yep, Cameron Young at 7,600, and then you have Scotty and Justin at 11.4 and 10.7, Cantlay at 9.1, and then back to Fitzpatrick at 7.9. That's really, Cam Young, I mean, obviously he's he's been playing great. He's been playing great. I think it's interesting to see him 10% clear of the big guns. And obviously you're dealing with salary with some of yeah. the, the, the favorites. And so Cam Young is a, is for a guy that's been playing his best, you know, the best golf of his life, 7,600 bucks feels pretty safe. Yeah. And you know, just to hit on some of the experts that are on him, Reed Fowler, who has been pretty hot is on him. Fantasy data is there. Number fire, the athletic, I, in fantasy labs, she, she GPP picks. So it's it's a little bit of cross-section of some of our uh, contributors that have done pretty well lately and, and you know, a little bit of everything. But like, I mean, looking at his previous rounds, so yes, he is a second and third recently. He missed the cut at the two hardest tournaments before that, Masters and Players Championship. Mm -hmm. So like, I don't look at this like, yeah. oh, Slam dunk, I'm betting Cameron Young. He's a rookie. Well, I mean, he's a rookie. He doesn't have, you know, have the depth of experience, but yeah. he doesn't also know better, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, yeah. I, I get, yeah, he's certainly, he's a rookie, and that's a, that's a key thing to say. He did get second to Genesis, which is a very strong field and a, and a pretty tough course overall. Uh, Neiman ran away with that one, but it was a great field. Uh, the Honda Classics, the tough course, came in 16th there. The players, I would have to look it up to see if he was on the wrong side of the weather. Yeah, if you had yeah, that totally Thursday, early, early Friday jaw, you were dead in the water there. <laughs> and then the encouraging thing for me, and we talked about this on a couple of the last pods, is RBC. He's yeah. third there, and Wells Fargo second. So if you look at the Genesis, RBC, and Wells Fargo, top three in all the three events, and there's three very different courses. Yeah, it worries me, though, his actual scores have been all over the place, right? Like Genesis, 66, 62, then 69, 70, right? That you said the RBC, 63, 73, 70, 66. So, like, it's he's got full he's feats or famine on him. He could go out and be in 160th place after the first two days, or he can be tied for first. So is that he's someone involved. you're going to bet the house on this week? I yes, top of the model, most mentions. If his salary was five hundred dollars higher, he'd have you know twenty five percent less mentions, fifty percent less mentions. I think that's right. Yeah, you're right. And you know, at seventy six hundred dollars, I I don't think there's anyone that's ever in the seven k price range. I'm gonna have in every lineup. Um, yeah, you know, you're gonna look to differentiate at you know in that area a little bit. Probably going to have a little bit more Cam Young, especially at that mention share. You kind of got to be overweight if you're on him, but not everywhere. So, so, so Kyle, with that, um, where do you start? So, we talked about Cam Young already. I do support that play, but I'm going to go back to the well with some uh, old favorites. Matt Fitzpatrick, uh, he's a scrambler. If the wind's going to be bad, that's that's something to keep your eye on. Right now, it kind of looks like the afternoon draw on Thursday, the morning draw on Friday might have a little bit worse from a weather standpoint. But give me Matt Fitzpatrick on a course that's tough. It requires you to scramble, get up and down, and par is a great score. Uh, I'm all in. 7900 bucks. Give him. That's a sweet uh, spot. I think that's, yeah. He's back it, in the sweet spot. Back in the sweet spot, top 20 machine. And. Uh, yeah, I know he's burned us at a couple courses, but I, I'm there. Uh, another one I'm intrigued by on the value side of it is Alex Noren at 7,000. 
maybe not as much on the cash side of it, but he's going to be in some of my GPP lineups. Uh, 33% mention share at this point in time. And then I think I'm hoping this drives value or ownership down a little bit, but Wells Altoris still getting 38% mention share from us or 30% mention share. And he's at $8,900. You know, last week just wasn't a great fit. This is a better fit for him. Uh, again, a guy that plays better at harder courses. Uh, he's going to be part of my lineups. Love it. Love yeah. It. I think that's I, uh, all good stuff. I, I like the Norin pick. I think I'm going to go the opposite of you, though, and play him in cash and not GPP. Because I don't think he's going to be get enough points to, to help you in a GPP, but he's going to make the cut. Yep. Right, like his consistency. Looking back, like I, I feel more confident that he's going to make the cut than Cameron Young. But Cameron Young is way more likely to win the tournament than Alex Norman. That's, that's, that's a fair point. take. That's a fair take. So Jordan, who do you like? Um, so I'm going. I'm going straight model here, guys. But I'm I'm staying away from all the high priced guys and Cameron Young, if you couldn't tell. So I'm actually <laughs> I'm skipping the top three guys in the model. Uh, but looking at the rest of the way, like Cantlay, Fitzpatrick, Norens, Altoris, Matsuyama, right? Like those are, what, I think the top 10 guys in our sheet. I've got five of them. And then I just couldn't pass up. The money that I had left has me on Tony Finau. I couldn't believe that Tony Finau was only $7,900. Mm-hmm. The distance is going to help, right? It's a long course. He yeah, can crush he, the ball. I you're right. I, I don't love it, but like, I want to, you know, he's the, got, uh, I don't know what his mention share is. He's not terrible. 15%. Uh, I just couldn't, I couldn't pass him up at $7,900. That's a steal. I'll back you, Tony, you know, it is, it is. I'll back you up. Um, the guys on the no laying up podcast, they, <laughs> they were joking about this a little bit, but like they said that with the redesign of the golf course and going from Bermuda to bent grass greens, <laughs> They said, hey, that should benefit bad putters. Like, it should be easier for bad putters to putt on bent grass green. So a guy like Tony Finau, who can mash the ball, just like you said, maybe he gets a little bit of a break not having to be so confused on uh, on tough greens. So I don't think it's a bad play. I think at 7900 like, you're talking Tony Finau is value. You get that yeah. soft pricing in majors, right? You get so many guys in those low 9Ks that you're like, man, Patrick Canley, 9100 so I look at where I'm starting, and I know I liked him on the on the betting card side, but like on DFS too, 9100 is that's a steal for Patrick Canley. You could pair Patrick Canley up with Justin Thomas or Scotty Scheffler and still be able to build a pretty good lineup. So yeah. um, he's a really good play. I'll also throw out Corey Connors again, eight thousand for Corey Connors. He's been an excellent ball striker this year. Putter falls asleep on him all the time. He's a notably terrible putter maybe he follows the tony finau um trend and just gets a bit of a break on on these bent grass greens but eight thousand for Corey connors with a, a pretty solid mention power is another place that i would look to yeah uh um, yeah, I, like, I like both those names as well mike that definitely going to be in my lineups so question for you guys can't i've got can't and fitzpatrick do you take those two or do you take uh, McElroy and Pereira? I personally like Cantlay yes. and Fitzpatrick. Uh, well, it, it depends on the type of That's... contest you're in, right? Um, especially if I was going cash, I would go that route. If you were going maybe a single entry GPP, something like that, I think Rory and Mito make more sense there. Yeah, I just, it was tough for me to pass up Mito at $6,700. But when I had seventy nine hundred dollars left over, I'm not gonna pass on fee now. No, like, it's I mean twelve hundred dollars on the table. And I think because Mito is sixty seven hundred, he might draw quite a bit of ownership as well. Yeah, yeah. It's a good point. Um, how do things shake out in tears, Kyle? Do we have any uh, hard decisions to make there? One very very tough one, and I've kind of been. Uh, casting a little bit of a net out here to get some opinions on but we're just going to round table this we're at the stop right at the top tier one scotty shuffler and justin thomas both at 38 percent mention share 
And then you scroll a long ways down uh, to find John Rahm, the other tier one gentleman at only 10% at this point in time. I can't believe that Rahm isn't really a consideration, but if we're following the model and where the consensus lies, it's between Scotty and JT. And I don't under- know how I'm going to make that decision. <laughs> I think the challenge... So I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a huge just personal fan of both. Uh, I was, you know, frankly a JT fan before Scheffler, but that makes sense because Scheffler is you know seemingly risen out of nowhere. Um, J I I want to bet I I want to emotionally I want to get behind the Scheffler story. Like I want this I don't want this to end. I want to see him keep winning, keep playing well, keep being in contention. Um, I always love when when JT wins too. JT has been fairly underwhelming in majors since he won the PGA five years ago. And so like it just if I'm taking it tears, you know, there's a seven hundred dollar price difference in their salary. But in tears, it just feels like the upside right now is just so much higher with Scotty. That's actually kind of where I was leaning as well. I feel like JT and Grinnan, we talked a lot about him last week. He's due to win, and he has a very good chance to win this event. Uh, That being said, I feel like his ownership and the narrative around him always gets over his skis a little bit. Mm -hmm. And we might be able to take Scotty in Tier 1, which would be a $700 bump in Classic, and have less ownership. You think that JT will be the highest known tier one player? I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. Are people starting to fade? I mean, are people have to maybe start saying, Scotty can't do this again, right? I think I think people are dumb. (laughs) In majors, they are. It draws a lot of casual players. It's you're who's no one's gonna wants to bet against Scotty. And I was even talking, he listens to the podcast tonight at league, and he was he does a pick for whoever you want. I was like, you can't not, he's like, I can't not pick Scotty. I was like, you can't not pick Scotty. Right. You, it's that is the mindset right now is you don't want to miss out on another Scotty. Like back in, you know, nineties, two thousands. Tiger can't keep doing this. Can he, he did it. He did it for eight years or whatever. It, it, I, Scotty I mean, doesn't triple on what Friday. I think last week. I know he did. <laughs> How different would the conversation be, right? Like he would have been fifth. You know, yeah. he would have had another top five going into this, and yeah, yeah. But so like, I, how how is Rom that far down? I mention? think people are really hung up on his short game this year, and basically the fact that he has been. The feedback is that he is a driving the ball like once in a generation statistically and that he's putting himself in position to take to 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 tear apart golf courses but he hasn't had to putt and chip that well and i think people are maybe indexing against the fact that like he's gonna struggle on these green he struggled at augusta too like he he wasn't really in contention there and it's it might be the same story it's not just about the the off the tee game Correct. And then he he had struggled putting a little bit for a while there. And he finally in Mexico had putted really well, uh, but he did fall off on approach and around the green, which were two of the areas that maybe kept him afloat a little bit uh, for a while there. So I just I just don't think you see the profile coming in like he's just he was the best golfer in the world for eight months. I don't think we can say that anymore. Right. Um, so I was. Question time on the PGA for you guys. Another one, not DFS related, but winners and runners up. Do you think the runners up the last 10 years have been more well known or less well known than the winners? Last 10 years. I I'm saw. Gonna, and and I'm not, well known is a wrong. Have they been favored? Because, right, like Phil won last year. He's more well-known than everyone else, but he was obviously Phil not was, favored at all. He was 200 you, to 1 last year. I'm going to say that that better players have won this tournament going back to, I mean, 
who else is one like Sean McKeel won the PGA like 15 years ago. Like, I don't think that has happened recently. I, I agree. It's been, uh, I saw a list. I feel like earlier this week and big names have won it recently outside of Phil. But so, well, but are, yeah, were Phil. those people big names when they won it? Like Colin Morikawa wasn't a big name when he won it two years ago. Right. Second place, Dustin yeah. Johnson, Paul Casey. Well, it it right? depends. It depends on who you're talking to. And this yeah. is where the majors conversation gets into it. Somebody that was following golf, Morikawa was the next big thing. Right. Yeah, yeah but he wasn't top 10 no. people to win Not it. Yet. But, but you are you going to say the same thing about like when Cam Young wins this week? You're going to have a bunch of casual fans that are going to say, who the hell is Cam Young? And we're yeah. going to be like, this guy has been tearing it up all year. Maybe that's a comparison to Morikawa winning, where you would have had to have been paying attention to know that he was a rising star. Yeah, but I'm looking back at it. The Probably the f- I was getting I was saying this because the four or five highest cost players haven't been the winners. Yeah. Right. Phil, Colin, maybe Brooks might have been his second year. Probably wasn't the first year because he won it two yeah. years in a row. No, this beat, is a, it's a good point. He beat, he beat DJ and Tiger. I don't I don't remember Justin Thomas 2017. Was he top I 10 mean, player in the world that five years not, ago? He was all 24 years old. Yeah. So Jimmy Walker. And then it gets, you know, Jason Day and Rory were probably top of their game. But like Jason yeah. Duffner, Keegan Bradley, Martin Keimer. Right. It's a bunch of. Martin the, Keimer was really good at that time. He won the U.S. Open, too. But I agree. It's a, it's a fair it's, point. It's not the, you know, the best players aren't the ones winning. They're usually the Masters and some of the U.S. Open. It's like the best players end up on top because it's such a hard tournament. Yeah. Here, there's been a lot of, you know, Colin ran away with it. All right. Maybe not didn't run away with yeah. it. But, but I don't yeah. think it's going to be a complete no name. I, I, I think... I, I, I think that we've passed, I think we're beyond it being a complete no name, but I think it's fair to say that if you were to look back again at like at our model, seeing a Cam Young come up or even a Matt or Corey Connors or Mito Pereira, like you wouldn't be surprised. Those guys have been good players. Um, but, you know, I do. I think if I scroll even further down and say, do I think that Sam Horsfield is going to pop up or Min Woo Lee? Probably not. Yeah, it's probably not like a. I don't want to say it, like a breakthrough tournament, right? Like Homa's probably not going to get his first win here. I he hope might. so. I have a hundred and one ticket on him. I hope he does. There you go. <laughs> uh, but it was just interesting, like looking back, right? Like it's not like I'm I'm staying away from the higher priced yeah. guys in in our RTG listener league. I told you my lineup. You know, all six players that'll be there uh, Thursday morning because like I'm not I'm not betting on the the biggest ones I'm going for a little more value across the board. Don't worry. I'll take them in other ones. Just not. in. Them. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Well, uh, final thoughts, final thoughts, uh, Kyle, I'm going to throw out one last name. I don't think it's a guy to win, but I think it's a guy that could be key to your lineup with the top 20 that I really like how he's playing lately. It's Keegan Bradley. He's mm-hmm. picked up, uh, he's improved in some of the areas of the game that was downfall before. I don't want to bet on him on a Sunday, but uh, he could be a good cog. That's my let's, that's my departure thoughts for you. Let's let's do this one. Who, who uh, uh, betting cards and DFS lineups aside, who do you want to see win the PGA Championship at Southern Hills, Kyle? Who who do you have your heart set on? I gotta go. Well. Let's get the first W in a major. Let's go, man. All right, Jordan. Good question. I'm looking at the sheet here. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go way down. I'm going for one sentimental pick and one person that I think might has a chance to. Kucher. I would. I would, I always root for Kucher. I would love to see him win. That would be a. A good story. It'd be like if Steve Stricker won. He's too old it, now. If Matt Kuchar wins, he will have uh, he will probably he will have to hit his like 18 longest drives he's hit in his yeah. life to play this golf course well. Um, uh, but my other one's Harold Varner. I would he's like playing to, good golf. Just, uh, yeah, I was like yeah. two guys I would like to see win. I don't think they're going to. But like if yeah. I was rooting for someone, like going down the rest of the list, hmm, Will's a good choice. 
but I'm going I'm going way way down long odds. I'll put a couple bets with you, Kyle, to on those two. <laughs> I'm going to get on the uh, the Spieth bandwagon this week. I'd love to. He's he's just been so good the last 12 months. Um, he feels like he's really battled and found his game and complete the career grand, grand slam at an event like this, I think would be uh, would be pretty cool. So I will be on on Team Spieth this week. So, um, all right, well, let's uh, let's wrap that up. I'm I'm super excited to, like I said, watch a really fun golf tournament, a golf course that I don't think a lot of casual fans or even hardcore fans really know all that well and, and certainly haven't seen since the redesign so take some time to watch the pga championship at southern hills it's going to be really fun um we're going to see some really really good golf um we'll look forward to catching up with everyone again in a week of course you can find our content on twitter our youtube channel reading the green any of the major podcast platforms we'll be back again next wednesday with our recap on the PGA Championship and a preview of the Charles Schwab Challenge at Colonial. See ya.